What we have here is my Dr. Pepper. But perhaps more importantly, we have a Chevrolet three-speed synchromesh transmission. We're going to clean it up, drain out the old oil, which is probably almost original, who knows. Uh, take it apart, find anything that's wrong, fix it. Put it back in, drive away, and be happy campers. Okay, so I wanted to mention that uh, in the old manual, they show a transmission vice bracket. Um, it was a Kent Moore issue tool, which you can't find, or I haven't been able to yet. So I just took measurements and made my own on a plasma table. And I just welded a little piece of angle iron to go into the vise there. Works just as good, if not better. And so I'm self-explanatory. I'm just going along, scraping. And uh, do that. And a wire brush. And it gets to looking pretty good. Now this is 80 years worth of of history and gear oil and dirt and everything else. The oil coming out of the road draft tube on the engine. And it would probably take you, you know, two weeks in a parts cleaner or a, a hot tank to soak through all that hard stuff. So I find the best method is to just use the putty knife and the wire brush and an hour spent cleaning like that gets it pretty good. And I also just noticed, I don't know if I can get a good angle, we got the factory paint marker or chalk lines there from when it went through on the assembly line. It's pretty cool. Ah. Did anyone ever tell you to work smarter, not harder? Well, they should have. So I've been cleaning this bracket here for 10 minutes and just left it attached. And that just works a whole lot better. So I will take that off real quick. And we can get to what's underneath. Number two. And pry. Most of it nice and clean, just have to do that little bit, and now we can clean under there. And then I'll do the same thing with the mount plate in just a bit. Now I'm going to take the bottom mount off, and it has a lock plate here with little tabs that lock the bolts. So you just got to take a chisel, bend those back. Okay, I'm gonna clean this up. And we'll put it back in the vise.
Okay, this is the shift cover. There are, you see six bolt heads. Only the four corner ones actually hold the cover on. So we'll remove those. Now if you have a truck of the same vintage, um, should be the same from 37 all the way up to, uh, I'm not sure how high. Um, this is a 48 and it's all the same. The only difference between passenger cars and pickups up to three quarter ton is that this is on top of the transmission. Passenger cars, it's on the side. Otherwise, the transmission is the same. I'm going to have to do a little research and see just exactly what all years this covers as far as being the same. I know definitely, well, I think 37 to 48, so. But I would guess it would probably go up to maybe even 53. And once again, this is, this is the Synchromesh 3 speed. If you have a four speed, like in a pickup, it's going to be a little different. I'm going to wipe off my hands and move the camera. Now we can see see the gears. Okay, let me reposition everything here. Okay, when I turn the input shaft, this, is, this gear here is directly hooked in, and it is always meshed with this counter gear. That is the, the driven gear on the counter, and then this next one uh, is the low speed gear. This, that meshes with that low speed gear, that is the um, uh, first and reverse gear. So right now, I'm in first speed. The output shaft is turning the same direction as what I'm turning the input shaft. Now if you see way back there, there's another little counter gear or counter shaft. One of the gears is engaged in this all the time and one is just spinning back there. So this first low and reverse gear, if we slide that over to that little one on the other end, then my uh, output shaft is now turning the opposite direction. So when we're, we're in reverse. So we can take that out, and then this is your second and third speed clutch, and depending on where you put that, you're in second and third speed. So basically all the movement is being done by two things. Your low and reverse gear and your second and third speed clutch. And then of course if both both are disengaged you're in neutral. So now what we need to do is put it in two gears at once. Let me move you back here. So I'm gonna move the second and third speed clutch all the way towards the input shaft and I'm going to put the low and reverse gear engaged in that uh, 
low speed drive gear. So now we're locked up. So we go to the yoke here for the drive shaft. And now we can easily remove that or loosen that since it's locked up. Just slide it right off. Okay, this is the gear. I just pulled that out of there. That's the gear on the output shaft that your speedometer cable engages with. That's where you get your speed. Okay, in the books they call this the clutch gear. I call it the input shaft. Well, you call it what you want. Uh, the next thing is to remove the retainer for the input shaft. So we remove these four bolts. Here's the retainer that's off. Here's our front input shaft bearing. Now to get the input shaft out, it really requires a special tool that to date I have not been able to find. You know, a lot of times you can find the old Kent Moore special service tools on eBay and so forth but I haven't been able to find the one that pulls this out so what I've done um, is I, something I don't really like to do but really don't have much choice I caught the back of the gear in there in the block of wood against the case. You don't want to pry against other gears in there, especially that clutch gear. And I popped it loose. It was It's not terribly tight. And then you can wiggle it the rest of the way and out it comes. And you're going to lose all your needle bearings, but we're going to replace those anyway. Let me show you can see that they were all around this shaft just like if you were replacing a universal joint on a drive shaft when you pull the caps off um, you know the cap is all full of needle bearings this is the same thing only these are just a little bigger so we'll have to make sure we get all those out of the transmission all right onward and upward Now my next objective is to get the main shaft out, and once again they want you to use a special tool. So for now I'm going to call that my dead blow hammer. I'm going to tap the output shaft back here and try and drive that main shaft right out the front.
There's my main shaft. This is what we took the rear yoke off for the drive shaft. Here are the gears and the synchronizers for the on the main shaft. Now our next job is to get the bearing out, the rear bearing that that main shaft was spinning on back in there. Okay, what we have to do to get this bearing out is kind of tricky. There's a lock ring you have to expand, and of course, the book calls for a special pliers. You got a tab hanging down here, and then just the, you know, the clamp goes all the way around, and then the other end is straight right there. Now I have a special pliers that expands that kind of clamp, but it doesn't fit in this narrow slot. So I'm going to have to use just a regular needle nose, if I can get it to stay on. Okay, I've spread those two parts apart. I'm going to try and use my ball-peen hammer. It's said to just tap it out. There we go. There's a bearing we got out. Still rolls nice. Now we're going to remove the counter shaft. I'm going to take you down here. Um, okay, right here. We're going to hit that with this brass drift and drive the shaft right out and we'll pick up the pieces once once the shaft is driven out There's a thrust washer. Well, We're going to get this eventually. There we go. There's our counter shaft. Went that way. Okay, our next task is to get the plugs out of the front and back. Here's the front one. And that'll allow us to drive the reverse idler shaft out. And then we can take those gears out. So I have a, uh, it's just like a 3 8 rod that I bent the end on. 
so that I can get in here from behind. And hopefully tap that out. There she blows. Now we're going to do the reverse one, or the rear one. Let me show you that plug. About the size of a quarter, about as thick. Okay, our next job is to get the shaft driven out of here. And the shaft is locked in with a pin. And the pin is not inside. Well, that you can get to it anyway. The pin is on the outside. Right here. And get my punch. And you knock it, you're actually knocking it into the shaft. It is smaller than the shaft, the pin is. So you're just getting it through the case. Now we'll see if I got it in far enough. I don't think so, not yet. Keep going. Okay, I've got that pin pushed into the shaft, so I'm going to push the shaft through, I'm just using the punch, okay, there's our reverse idler shaft, you can see here's the pin that was on the outside of the transmission case, pull my punch out, now I can get the idler gears out. There they are. There's a thrust washer. Other one must still be in there. Probably fell in the oil. Now last but not least is the gear for the speedometer. Let me find the right size of wrench and I'll pull that out next. Okay, that's 15 sixteenths. Socket probably would have been better. Just unscrew that. There's your speed gear. Let's see, that turns the cable when it spins. Okay, we have got an empty case. I'm going to throw this in the hot tank 
at work and uh, get it nice and clean. We'll paint it. Then we'll start going back together and inspecting all the. Uh, I'll clean up all the gear assemblies and check the bearings and uh, do what we have to do. All right, I am getting all my parts cleaned and painted, and I have the transmission case clean. And I don't know if this is worth showing, but this is a little trick I use when I'm masking off gasket edges and I want to avoid getting paint inside the case. So I run my masking tape over it and then I just take a, a round object if you have a sharp edge like this and it makes a beautiful cut around the edge. And maybe most of you already know that but sure does a good job. Okay, I'm going to do the front end. <clears throat> I'm going to be ready to paint this. Okay, so here we go. Got my case cleaned and painted. Got a nice cast iron gray coating on there. Got my bolt-on pieces painted. Um, hardware's all cleaned. Gear sets are all cleaned. There are a few things I'm going to do. I'm going to check uh, tolerances with my two shafts here into the brass bushings where they go. And I'll do that with a with a gauge. My bearings are good. Don't need to replace them. The other one's here. Um, you can take this apart, but the only thing to take off of there is the bearing, and I'm not going to do that. So, so we're good there. I will show you as I do that. Um, I've got small parts kit from Chevs of the 40s. Uh, another good source I would u I've used in the past is the filling station. Uh, maybe you know another place to get these things, but I like those too. But I got all my new parts laid out. Now this kit almost covers 20 years worth of transmission, so you got three different sizes of needle bearings in it. We'll only need these. I've got my old parts for comparison. So let's get to it. <laughs> 